To all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave para peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is Reverend Sean Whittington's Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Reverend Sean, the Rev. Welcome to my haunted house, my very haunted house. Been quiet today. They probably don't want to scare my guest today. He's not really a huge paranormal guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bug him a little bit about that today, and I will get to him as soon as we can, because I know that's why you all tuned in today. You all know him and love him anyway, so I've missed you guys. been on the road for a couple of weeks. Hopefully, sooner than later, I'll be able to share with all of you why I was on the road so much in December and back on the road again this past month. Uh, it'll uh, Hopefully, it'll you know be a, a really, really cool thing. I think 2022 is going to rock. Um, so having said that, what do I want to talk to you guys? Let me check the prayer urn. Okay, who do we got here today? Alice P. from Texas. Very, very cool. I remember you, Alice. Recently born again. She's getting baptized this Sunday. Doesn't know any good prayers. Alice, don't feel bad. You know, I, 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 more and more people that I talk to every day just don't know how to pray. Well, if you don't know any prayers, that's okay. Just make the sign of the cross and pray to the creator, God, whoever, whatever name you attach to it, just pray to him out loud as if he's standing right there in front of you. Uh, or she, he or she is standing there in front of you. Um, and that's fine. But congratulations on um, being born again. And uh, congratulations on your upcoming baptism. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to share a prayer with you that I share with a lot of born agains. They, they love it. And uh, I will email you a copy of it later. Okay. It's a beautiful prayer called the Confitior. All right. Brothers and sisters, if you want any positive vibes from this prayer uh, while I'm reciting it, just close your eyes, touch your computer screen, bow your head. I offer this prayer up for Alice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and to all the saints that I have sinned, exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I beseech, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the holy apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy on me, forgive me my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant me pardon, absolution, and remission of all my sins. Amen. You didn't ask for this, Alice, but I'm going to light a candle for you. How's that? For your big day on Sunday. Alice in Texas, may the Holy Spirit enter and intervene in your life on this day and every day for the remainder of this journey and on to the next. Alice, that candle will sit here and burn with me for the remainder of the show. Then I will take it in and it will burn with all the other candles until it's done burning out. Congratulations. Let me check the Paranormal Ministry mailbag. Boom. William B. from Nebraska. Rev, best medal for protection against evil. William. Oh, there's so many. Okay, well, I'll just go with two of my personal favorites. And I happen to have one of them right here. One is the Miraculous Medal. Let me see if I can get that to the camera for you guys. It's the Miraculous Medal. Mary on one side. 
the symbol for Jesus and Mary together on the backside. It's also referred to as the Mary medal. Uh, Mary came to a nun in a vision, and in that vision, she showed this nun that medal. After the vision was over, the nun made the medal, and the rest is, as they say, history. Very, very powerful medal. You can get them online. The miraculous medal or Mary's medal. The other one would have to be a scapular, and there's many, many different types of scapulars. I happen to have sitting here a St. Michael scapular. Two very blessed pieces of cloth bound together by two very strong pieces of blessed fabric. They hang over your shoulders like this. A piece of cloth on your back, a piece of cloth in the front. It hangs low in the front, just so you know. Very powerful, very blessed scapulars. They say that if you're wearing a scapular at the time of death, it is an automatic get out of hell free, go directly to God, do not pass go card. So that's the beautiful thing about scapulars. And like I said, there's so many of them. I wear a lot of the brown scapular, the green scapular, sacred heart scapulars, the St. Michael scapular, but you can pull scapulars up on a line and find one that speaks to you and purchase it and get it blessed by a priest and wear it. Under your shirt against your skin is the best as often as possible. Never when you bathe, swim, or take a shower. All righty. What else would I want to tell you guys? Anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go to visit, remember my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So if you go there, I know times are tough, but if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, click on it and send in a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts, and trust me, we will put it to good use. In addition to being an ordained exorcist, I'm also a certified spiritual advisor. If you're having issues of a spiritual nature, not necessarily attached to the paranormal, and you'd like to make an appointment to speak to the Rev about that, there is a place on the website where you can make an appointment to speak with me. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called the WSE course slash book. On that page, you'll find the ghost store. Cool things to purchase on the ghost store, like this awesome throwback Ghost Be Gone coffee cup and a lot of other things, if you go for that sort of stuff. But scroll down a little further on that page, you'll find my new haunted autobiography, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry. And I quote, scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, my publisher, Stellium Books. But don't let that scare you off of purchasing a copy. It's a much different kind of feel-good story. A lot of good versus evil were good wins. But the best part about purchasing the book, if you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my book goes to support stjude.org. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So you get to do something good with your purchase. You can get an autographed copy off of the website, and it'll come to you enclosed in a house blessing kit, or you can get it a little less expensive at Amazon. Scroll a little further down, and you'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I am a founding member. I offer a online college level course introduction to spiritual warfare through the wse and this course is for all you true warriors for christ out there that feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand making a stand circling the wagons and putting up a good fight against god forbid true evil if it ever comes calling, that's the course for you. You can enroll in the course there at the website. If you would like to know a little bit more about the course before making that type of commitment, there is a Worldwide Society of Exorcists Facebook page. You can read a little bit more about the course there, or just call me, or send me an email, or a text. I'm easy to find. I'm approachable. We can talk about the course. Most importantly, all my students that graduate get a stunning diploma 
certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed items that you can only get from yours truly, the Rev. Please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. Thank you very much. And in case I forget later, thank you all for tuning in. I don't have a show without you guys. So God bless each and every one of you today. I haven't had a chance to say that to all of you since Easter. So God bless you all. All right, guys, the moment of truth. The reason why you all tuned in. I don't know what to say about this guy. He's just a really cool dude. He's a friend. I love him to death. Um, Podcaster. Producer. One of my co-producers, uh, really a cool dude. He's known in some circles now as the Ghost Granddaddy. And those of you that know, know why. <laughs> and I hope he got permission from her to be here today, or he's going to be in trouble later. Brothers and sisters, without further ado, please welcome to the show the one and only Zach Clayton. Zach, are you with us today, brother? Shh, don't speak too loud. She's in the other room. How's it going? Oh, How you man. doing, Rev? I'm hey, hanging in there, let me, let me do my producer job here. Uh, we've got uh, Natalie who wants to say welcome back and uh, wanted to make sure that you saw that. And then I want to thank uh, Miss Autumn, who is joining us on our uh, YouTube channel for Pact. So look at this. Natalie, God bless you. It's good to be back. And Autumn, thank you for tuning in tuning in sister god bless you too oh my gosh zach what can i tell you thought we might not have a show today i wasn't doing too good yesterday yeah yeah you gave uh, us a little bit of a scare yesterday yeah, it was kind of weird like i said i was telling you earlier that a very um a dark case came over came across my desk here just after the new year and i've been working on that with all with all all people a wonderful Jewish rabbi exorcist. I know many of you right now are going, huh? But they, they're out there. <laughs> I've been working because the, the client was Jewish. So I thought she'd feel more comfortable me reaching out to a, a, a um, messianic Jewish exorcist to help with the case. Brought in a very talented um, psychic too on the case. It's just, so I, People close to the, that situation think that I came under attack yesterday. I could have because, like that brother, I was down. Uh, vomiting, diarrhea. I know this is all TMI. Um, severe stomach cramps. Slept most of the day on my bathroom floor. Uh, yeah, it was just crazy. And then all of a sudden, I'm better. Went to the doctor. No COVID. No gallstone attack. No food poisoning. Gave me something to settle my stomach. Told me to stay hydrated. And I'm 100% better today. But isn't it weird how when I called you yesterday to say, no show today, I thought it was Friday. I'd lost a whole day. That's how out of it I was. So those things happen, but I'm doing much better now. I'm happy to be here today. I didn't want to miss today because I was excited to just give you a chance to everybody knows you and loves you anyhow. But I wanted to give you a chance to introduce yourself to all of those that may not be familiar with you and all the great things you do out there, but let's get the important things out of the way. How was your, I saw you on Good Friday and that was it. How was your Easter? You know what? We had a really good time with the family. Um, unfortunately, my father uh, has been uh, pretty ill lately. He's went, he suffered through a, um, a number of strokes in the last couple of weeks and uh Thankfully, they've been minor strokes, but it's still kind of one of those things that, you know, how minor can a stroke be? It's still, you know, issues with your brain. But uh, we got to spend a lot of time with a bunch of family and, and uh, you know, it's always a good thing. It's it's truly always a good thing. And then we got to celebrate the, you know, the, the Friday before on a live show, which was unique for, for what we're going through right now. Uh, you know, you being the world traveler that you are. <laughs> you know what's funny, dude? I uh, I am a blessed person. Uh, I have had far more gifts from the other side of the veil and from above laid into my lap than I deserve in one lifetime. And I don't travel well. But uh, what I have did in December and what I recently did this past month, 
um, is a gift from God. Uh, I can't wait to be able to announce it to everybody. Yeah. But it's it's like uh, I don't travel well, but it was just the traveling went so smooth for me. Um, there and back and while I was there and all that, just just one of those things. It's uh, meant to be. But um, Easter, I love Easter. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> everybody's going to wonder why am I sharing this? I share this for a couple of reasons. I know who you are engaged to be married to now. And Easter and and uh, couples and being married. Um, I remember back in the day, I used to love Easter because I, I had a bunny suit. Well, it was just the top half of the bunny suit. And I would sneak into the, the master bedroom on Easter morning and wake the wife up and go, hey, I'm here to, to, for some eggs. Um but you know, <laughs> that never you went over. How fitting that was right now. Okay, um, oh, man. Adrian just recently found a new pet yesterday. She found herself a little guinea pig yesterday. Oh, okay. And I keep introducing this guinea pig to everybody as Porky the Rabbit. So you know, I mean, now. You know, but that's the name he chose. He speaks to me, and he, that's the name he wanted. So, for the few that don't know, you are one of my co-producers. My other producer is your uh, fiance, Adrian Hart, aka yeah. Ghost Granny. That's why you're now Ghost Granddaddy. <laughs> um, and I know how it is. She's a big star now. Is going to be coming out on an episode of Haunted Hospitals. Uh, she practically runs things with Jeremy things network. And uh, she's got her own couple of her own shows now. So now she's, you know, moved on from me. So thank you for yeah. hanging yeah, in there. I have you. to schedule time with her too, Sean. So, <laughs> um, you know what I find interesting uh, knowing Adrian the way I do, and I don't know her great, but I've known her for a while. I look at your guys' Facebook profiles. I'm stalking you for some information for the show today over the past week. And I notice how all over your Facebook page, engaged to be married, got engaged with Adrian Hart on such and such date. Um, relationship, yes, I'm engaged. You go to her profile, nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No relationship yeah. information to give out. Uh, single, uh, you know. See, yeah. I, I actually wonder sometime, am I thinking, am I just dreaming all this? Am I, you know, am, am I doing this again or, or what's going on here? So, yeah, but, uh, you know, she's, she's going to try to hide it and, and you know, like fool everybody. And then one day it's just, well, here he is. I couldn't get rid of him. So here he is. So. Oh, God bless you, brother. You, all, you will remain in my prayers. And, and if you and if you see her later, tell her I miss her and, you know, to say hi to me occasionally. Um, I've got, oh, I know what I want. So uh oh I'm, yeah, y'all are crazy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you should have right, You got to come in now. You can't just say. <laughs> <laughs> you should have locked the door. Yeah. What? <laughs> I should have locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have. <laughs> See these questions? There's a, just, would you be, you, you're not going to be, you might be surprised about this. Most of these are from people that have sent in questions for me to ask you. They're excited that you're here. So let's start with the very important one. How many of, how many of them are about Adrian though? The next couple are. So are you ready? Is she out of the room? <laughs> Is she out of the room yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Did you, somebody wants to know, did you get, ever get your hockey jersey back? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I did. Yes. Uh, she realized how terrible the team was and she didn't want to wear it anymore. So, yeah. New Jersey Devils. I, but I love the jersey. I, I love that jersey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Somebody wants to know, how has it been Ghost Granddaddy living with the Ghost Granny as of late since she's tried to stop smoking? Whoa. That's been, that's been fun, but you know what? The thing is, is that everybody, everybody needs to congratulate her because it's not an easy thing to do. Oh, absolutely I quit, I quit smoking 15 years ago. I went from smoking three packs a day to nothing. And I know that I was not a great person. So I, I love the strength that she showed so far. And, and I think it's a, I think it's just a fantastic thing. It's a great thing for her health. Uh, so she can be here. Um, we're trying to foster children now. And uh, 
I think it's great because this will just allow us to do it for longer. So absolutely, that's great. And and she's in. Let her know she's in my prayers too. That is tough for all the people now. A lot of you know, not everybody knows this, and I've never tried to hide it. But when I first met my wife uh, twenty some odd years ago, I was a raging alcoholic and drug addict. And one day, I kid you not, I got on my knees and I just asked God, I said, listen, I know you exist. You know that I know you exist. I know you love me. I need help here. I need you to intervene in my life right now and help me. And I don't want to drink or do drugs anymore. You know, and I totally forgot that I had done that. And the next day, and then a day and a day and a day and a day and a month and whatever. And I just realized that it, one day I just realized it's been years since I've had a drink or did any drugs. So if you're ready to do it and you need help, you can ask for the man upstairs. But for all of those people out there that have an issue, would love to stop smoking that smoke, do you know what her, how she's going about it that is helping her be so successful? Strength. Uh, Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin. Uh, she did get a, a prescription of Wellbutrin, which, uh, you know, Wellbutrin is one of those things that, uh, that you can, you got to really be careful with. Uh, I know that when I first got prescribed Wellbutrin, it did not go well for me. Um, uh, and Joshua, you can do it. You just have to really want to do it. But other than that, it's strength, patience, um, and, you know, just effort. I mean, it's it's really not an easy thing to do when you've been doing no. it your entire life. And you know this is, uh, Sean, as you and I have discussed, I at one point in time was a terrible, terrible drunk myself. And it was kind of one of those things. I woke up one morning and I realized, wow, I haven't had a beer in over a year. And it was just kind of a shocking thing to me that I was like, geez. So I went to go try a beer that day and I was like, going, oh, I used to drink this stuff all the time. So, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's really one of those things that, you know, I, I asked her to just be ready when she wanted to do it. Um, to when she was going to do it, because you have to be ready. Because if you're not ready, it's, you know, the word I'm thinking about doing something is automatically giving you an out. If you put the word think in there, that leaves room for a doubt. You have to know, like you said, you have to know you want to do it. When you know you want to do it, it makes it easier because you're telling yourself you don't have an out. You can't skip out on this. This is what you want. Let's do it. And that's what she did. I'm on my way. I'll be watching. God uh -oh, bless she's her. going to be watching, so we're in trouble. Oh, well, you are. You, you're there. She can't get me for at least until I come on a trip to Colorado or something. I was going to say, I would watch what you say really close right here. <laughs> so. I learned the hard way, you know, uh, I forgot, you know, when you own property, all somebody has to do is pull you up on the county assessor records and they find out <laughs> your address. Um, I remember when we first moved into this house, I, my house is very haunted. So it was like I've had ghosts here call 911. Um, I know you're not a big ghost guy, but I, I went out to say goodbye to some friends that were going back to um, England the next day. And when I came home, I pulled into my driveway. And at the time, I had three Mastiffs living in the home with me. A SWAT team s swooped in on me in my driveway. And you could hear my dogs. It sounded like they were ripping something from limb from limb inside the home. They said, well, we got a 911 call from your house. I said, there's no way. My dogs don't use the phone. My wife is working. There's nobody in there. We live just my wife and I and the three dogs. Uh, they said, well, we've got to get in there and check because it sounds like they're killing somebody in there. And it did. I said, well, I can't let you guys in now. You're going to shoot my dogs. I can't have you shoot my dogs. They're like, well, you're going to have to get in there and, and lock them up or something. And then we got to come in and check. So I went in there, I got the dogs all locked in the master bedroom, and I opened up the blinds and turned the light on so the cops could look in through the window and see the dogs and that nobody was dead in the master bedroom. Then I let the cops in there, searched the whole house. They thought maybe a burglar had gotten in there and the dogs were killing the burglar, and the burglar called the 911. But there was nobody in the house, man. I knew. I didn't say nothing to the, to the cops, but I knew what had happened. And so I had... They put tracers on the call where it might have originated from. It still showed that it was my house. Um, crazy, crazy things. So, um, yeah, 
let's talk let's talk a little bit about the paranormal. I know you're not a big paranormal guy, but you got pretty much thrown into the deep end without the floaties on, um, falling in love with the ghost granny and getting engaged and being with her, uh, being the ghost granny. And um, where do you stand on the paranormal? Uh, I know when you guys first met, you you met at an event that she was part of at the the temple i believe tell me about yeah that. yeah at the masonic Very temple nice. yeah we um uh, she invited me to go with her and and she uh drove up here to colorado to uh from new mexico and picked me up and then we went together and uh yeah it was my first ever venture into the paranormal world and I'm not going to say that I'm a non-believer, but I'm going to be the one who's going to be the skeptic and I'm going to do everything I can do to try to find realistic. You know, I, uh, a really good friend of mine, Nick, uh, who's on the Things Network all the time, Nick Muley, he and I, we have something in common that is great that I actually kind of hope that there is an afterlife because I believe in hearing stories living and learning people's stories. And I think that if we can learn people's stories by the history, by the by the actions of of the paranormal or or just uh, the the elder generations, we can learn so much. And I think that uh, the one reason I really hope that there is a paranormal is because it does keep some of these stories alive. And uh, you know the right now where we are in society with, uh, everybody wanting to discount the the history of things. I think it's dangerous to do, and I think that maybe some of these stories, eventually, once we figure out exactly how to communicate and speak regularly with paranormal, I think that that would help us clarify a lot of things and really could clear things up. So, um, but myself, I don't, uh, I don't, I've never had any any uh, verifiable contact. I, you know. Um, uh, I'm a very spiritual person, you know, um, I, I do believe that there's something a lot better than I am. I've got two sons that are very, very, uh, wonderful children. And I know I didn't have anything to do with that. I mean, I may have been there, but you know, they were, they were given to me by something much greater than I. So, but you know, it's an interesting field to be part of. I love watching the science. I love watching the history of it. Um, and, uh, being around it is really neat. Meeting a lot of, let's be honest, we're meeting a lot of colorful people. A lot of colorful people. Some of them I'm a little like, wow, that person's a wackadoo. What's going on there? But, uh, you know, it's still fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, many times I've been called Father Wackadoo. <laughs> I, I think I've called you that once or twice. But no. um, I'm glad. I love the fact that you're all you're a spiritual man because you don't you can be spiritual and even you know religious for that matter and not necessarily go for the whole paranormal thing. Um, I love that about you. Talk to us a little bit about are you a religious person? I mean, you had your sons. You, you're seeing. In, I'm just going to throw it out there for me. That is when I see children and offspring, you know, that, that, that is God um, working through that person that brought those lives into the world. And, and you see those miracles in your children, but uh, are you much of a religious person or, or where do you sit on that? I am a very interested person uh religious no not really i am interested in all religions though and i don't discount any of them i don't discount anything because you know there's so many views on it and look uh once again i do believe um i i do truly believe that there's something stronger than than myself out there because you're right i look into the uh, you know i look into the eyes of my boys and i know that they're here because of me um, but I know that if I wasn't gifted them, they wouldn't be here, you know? Um, yeah, it has to do with their moms and, and, and myself, but let's be honest, that's, a, the greatest gift that any person could ever get was, was your child. So, um, you know, I've got, uh, I got one son who's 28 in Japan right now, right now, teaching English to children, uh, with disabilities in kindergarten. And then, uh, my youngest son, Justice, here in uh, Colorado, 
just became a deputy sheriff in the jail and I couldn't be more proud of him. And once again, I know that that had help with something a lot bigger than I. <laughs> so, I also am a big believer in guardian angels and I think your guardian angel, you um, not being, let's, uh, for lack of a better term, a paranormal guy per se, um, they probably filter a lot of that stuff out for you, shelter you a little bit, protect you a little bit from that, which is cool too. Mm -hmm. um, that might change over the years being uh, uh, with Adrian and uh, doing the, the things that she does with her. In fact, we, we had to stop talking about it in the green room because the show was getting ready to start. You started to tell me this amazing story of the next um, haunted adventure, ghostly yeah. adventure that you were going to go on with her. And I believe um, Jeremy from yep. Things is coming out to visit you guys. Talk to me about these locations that you guys are going to go check out. Everybody thinks, oh, Colorado is going to be the Stanley. Um, that's kind of been there, done that sort of a thing. Uh, but I know it's not the Stanley. So tell everybody what is on the supernatural menu for you guys um we're going to go to a couple places there's a uh uh there's a a park called cheeseman park um in denver and this park was originally um the denver cemetery and uh and you know when when denver was first founded it was where uh they laid to rest the the people that were there um, and after a while, they decided, you know what, when Denver started to grow and they, they decided to make uh, Cheeseman Park into a park. Uh, it's right by the Butterfly Pavilion, which makes this even weirder. Um, and uh, when they hired the undertaker to move the bodies so they could make this transformation from cemetery to park, this gentleman was not, I, I guess I can say was not ethical, okay? And that's the best way to put it. And he was getting paid per headstone. So it wasn't the headstone he removed, it was the headstones he planted. So he was taking, he was taking coffins and separating two, you know, separating one person to two coffins, smaller coffins, and um, you know, just making up names, making up history and stuff like that. And he did this for uh, quite a while before he was caught and uh, uh, punished. But I mean, it's just that uh, very good word for it there, Joshua Sinister. Yeah. Um, and and it's just it, it's kind of one of those things that it's amazing because it shows what people can do and the links people will go to, you know, to to make themselves better you know what they think is better but the amount that they just don't care about somebody else's life and and you know so cheeseman park has always been something that i've been wanting to go and see you know when we especially since i uh started uh, uh the relationship with adrian and and uh you know jeremy told us hey let's go and do something of course the stanley was on there but let's be honest here the stanley is it's the Stanley. It's everywhere. It's right up near Estes Park. It is the most beautiful place in the world. You will not find a more beautiful place than Estes Park in the Stanley uh, Hotel. You really won't. But we would rather go to this road that's in Brighton and uh, go to um, uh, go to uh, uh, the the Cheeseman Park and see something that is left off you know, uh, most people's, uh, most people's bucket list, because these are, uh, you know, these are just new places and we want to introduce people to, uh, some of the new places out there. That sounds phenomenal. That's going to be, uh, I believe that's going to be an outing for you that you won't forget. That's going yeah. to be very, uh, very interesting. I hope you guys plan on filming that. And, I think uh, that we're going to be doing some stuff, and I know that we're going to end up taking pictures so I can uh, supply oh, yeah, uh, cool. supply some other people some pictures. But, yeah, we're going to do some stuff, and uh, uh, we're 
so i am so blessed that we're going to also take my father with us so oh my he, God. he really yeah. gets into doing this stuff so is he really yeah he does <laughs> that's cool he really does. that is so cool man so, how um the other location you said there was two yeah the other location is called riverdale road it's an 11 mile stretch of road in between thornton and uh brighton colorado and they've got uh everything from the woman in white to uh, to uh, ghost uh, Camaro, to children playing in the road, to there's all kinds of activity on this road. It is called one of the most haunted roads in the country. Wow. Um, so, but uh, yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds. And and I'll be honest with you, it's it's funny because Adrian is more, um, she's more excited about going to this road than she was Cheeseman Park. And um you know, of course, she was, uh, you know, she's not uh, being small town girl. She's not too thrilled about being in Denver at night. And, uh, you know, which being a Colorado guy, Denver at night's no different than being anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, you know, so but she's really looking forward to that. And we're just looking uh, forward to being able to do some stuff with Jeremy. You know, he's recovering and and going to get uh, some stuff done. And, and we're just thrilled that he's healed enough to where he can come and spend a little bit of time with us. And we get to go do this stuff together because, Very cool. you know, you know, Rev, it's uh, one of the things that I tell about my story all the time is and and uh, Jeremy can can validate this himself. You know, one second away from your history being rewritten, you can attest to this with what you went through. One second away from your history ending, not being rewritten, ending. And so that one second, if you you know, if you don't live your life like you want to, if you don't live your life with purpose, just remember one second, that story could end. Are you happy with where you're at? And that's what we really want to, you know, try to get across to people. When you see Jeremy, tell him I said hi, give him a hug and a kiss for me. I, I hope I, I'm not going to insult him here. I mean this as a compliment. I know he had an injury, but I, I watched a portion of his uh, latest new podcast, and he's wearing the patch, the eye patch. Yeah. I am a big eye patch fan. I think the eye patch looks really cool, and it looks good on him too. So, I don't know if that, if if that's permanent or if once the eye heals up, if he gets rid of the eye patch. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I uh, know that story. But one of the first things that when I got to talk to Jeremy the first uh, time uh, since my uh, since I was run off the road on my motorcycle um, seven years ago. You know, I have facial implants to where I have posts and stuff in my face. Uh, and, and you know, Jeremy being the sexy single guy he is, I had to start coming up with Iron Man pickup lines for him that he can start using now, you know, because he's got that metal in his body. And I'm like, yeah, but now you get to walk up to a girl and say, hey, baby, you ever been with a real Iron Man? Come on. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. You guys, you know, with the eye patch, all he needs to do now is, you know, get one of those pirate hats and start, you know, carrying a hook around. <laughs> a lot more. Arms. Maybe we'll find him one. Yeah, maybe we'll find him one. So <laughs> I yeah. love the patch. I think it looks really cool. And him being in the paranormal and stuff, it just gives him, it just gives him this, this the look, you know. Um, yep. Yep. Motorcycles. That's another thing you and I have in common. I, I've ridden all my life. I still have my motorcycle out in the garage, but uh, Sharon and I, for many, many years, we rode with a motorcycle club called the Red Riders out here in Vegas. I don't know if you saw the movie 3000 Miles to Graceland. There's a scene where a motorcycle gang pulls up alongside of Kevin Costner as he's driving uh, out in the desert. And they, one of the guys in the gang talks to him a little bit as they're the, the motorcycles are riding along the car then the group rides on that was us we filmed that up at nelson nevada but um we had a bad motorcycle accident that she wasn't sharon wasn't harmed at all a few abrasions uh my knee has never been the same but we once the bike got fixed we rode for a few more years but then the element got real weird we were a member of a motorcycle federation of clubs here just clubs not gangs no one percenter clubs. Yeah, yeah. But I was down at the Laughlin River Run when they had the big biker shoot out there at one of the casinos. Between, mm -hmm. I, I believe it was the Mongols. I could be wrong. Hell's Mongols. Angels and the Mongols, yeah. Boom. Yeah. Um, and then the whole thing got really weird. We started mm -hmm. having a, a shady element 
come into the club and when you went on rides and went to some of these places and ran into some of these uh, one percenter clubs or outlaw clubs, it, the, the, the vibe wasn't cool. So we just slowly got out of that scene and stopped doing it. But I still got the bike uh, sitting in the garage. Are you still riding? Uh, when I can. I, uh, I, I still ride whenever I can. I will ride... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll I, they call me the polar bear and I rode with the VFW warriors. And that's because the first time I met the president, um, I, I met him at uh, at an adult uh, beverage establishment and I rode in and it was snowing. And he was like, man, you must have polar bear blood. So <laughs> that story carried on from there. But uh, yeah. And and that's that's one of those things, Sean, that that led to what my business is now and i know that we're not really talking about that yet but no, i want to talk about that yeah. please finish finish your 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 thought I, there but then i want you to dive into all of that the one thing that we do as bikers that people don't really realize is every weekend when you see those groups of bikes those groups of bikes that are all out there all dressed in their leathers all you know loud pipes this and that doing all this stuff people think oh boy they're out just raising Kane, they're doing, you know, you're wrong. We're usually out there raising money for good causes. We're on poker runs. We're on uh, benefit rides. We're on stuff like that. All gathered to raise money for so many causes, whether it's sick children, veterans, uh, 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 you know, a fallen brother or sister on the, in the bike world, stuff, stuff like that. That's what we do to spend our time and to be together as you know, uh, as brethren, uh, my poker run after I went down, we had Mongols at my benefit. I didn't even know the gentleman. I didn't know him, but that didn't matter. They were still there because I was part of that group. That yeah. that's that's an exclusive group. You know, uh, one of the patches that I love is like uh, if you have to ask why a dog sticks his window or his head out a window, you've never been on a motorcycle. You know, I love that patch because it is it's so true. You know, there's just you know, if you don't know, I can't tell you why it's so wonderful. But it, it's it's such a wonderful lifestyle. Um, I do miss it when I don't have a bike like right now. I miss it. Um, because I'm the guy that'll ride when it's 20 degrees. I don't, none of that cares. Matters. For, a, for a split second, I almost, and I'm going to get hate mail for this, for a split second, I thought you were going to talk about the shirt that a lot of guys ride, uh, wear that says. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you don't see the, you know, who. She's yeah, talking. yeah. So. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, listen, uh, I am going to probably wrap the show up with some, fan questions for you but before we do that let's talk about oh my gosh you're involved in so much stuff let's talk about your podcast the channel the website what you do all the cool things you're doing just do the show is yours brother tell everybody about all of that stuff yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna start with uh the podcast because i think this is something that's absolutely neat um, that we're doing, uh, we've, we've decided, uh, and, and I started, I started a channel on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. I started this because I originally wanted to start the packed podcast podcasting for all coming together. And due to unnecessary movement, I decided to just take and open those pages up to many podcasts and uh, as as uh, one person would have, or as luck would have it, you are on Pact right now. We are on our Pact channels hey. right now. Yeah, hey. you are. Yeah, if you look, you're there. Believe it or not. So, and we are wanting to do. We're wanting to get this. Um, yeah, Nick is also. Nick Muley is also on there every Wednesday, right? Oh, that I, I want off that. If Nick's on that network, I want <laughs> off. You know what? If Nick's on it, everybody should want on the channel just... because we all know Nick is a great guy. Um, but uh, our our plans are for this is we want to make it a nonprofit channel. And what we want to do is we want to take and give an opportunity to for uh, people with disabilities to have a chance to get into the podcasting world. Uh, 
in produ in production, in in editing, in um, showrunner, doing all these jobs that you can do. Give them a little opportunity to join us and be included in some of the fun, including hosting a show. Um, <laughs> yeah, here we go. She is listening. So, um, but, uh, yeah, we're just wanting to make it to where we can really make a difference. And, uh, one of the things that we're also going to try to do with, uh, this nonprofit is also start what are called the stand up, um, stand up programs where we can offer what uh, community dare to care does one of our offshoots and we can offer free clothing free furniture free housewares free toys hospital needs whatever to people in the community because people donate stuff to us and we don't feel like it's our right to sell it we feel like it needs to get into the hands of the people who need it and you know look god love God love uh, thrift stores for what they do, you know, but the truth is, is that a lot of people don't understand that when you donate to those, they sell these items, you know, and if, if they're not true, legitimate, um, if they're not true, legitimate uh, 501c3s, um, it, all you're doing is putting it in the hands of a CEO or a director. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the people who actually need it aren't priced out. Um, with these stand-up, uh, with these stand-up centers, we're also going to have a place where uh, people can go in and uh, try to have some college students at the Great University of Northern Colorado here in Colorado help them build resumes. UNC is a teacher's college, so we're going to hope that we can get a couple kids to come in and help people build resumes, and maybe even have a couple computers set aside to where people can do part-time jobs, work for six hours on our computers to start lifting themselves up. That's what it's all about. We'll have a place where they can take and they can um, start repairing their bicycles, their tents, their air mattresses. The, with uh, with donated items. These are all things that are needed, needed so badly. And, you know, as we always say, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to ask for help. Asking right. for help is a great thing. If you're asking for help in the wrong places, though, when nobody's hearing your plea, what good's it doing? Right. So, you know, if we can, once again, here we go with me in this theme, if we can start sharing people's stories, sharing what they do, when, you know, why they do it, then maybe we can start coming together as a community again, you know? And I know that you agree with this also. I, I get tired of people who say, well, I don't ever watch the news. All they do is talk about bad stuff. Let's change that. We have that ability. Let's work together as a, as a community of people who are different and understand this. All of us are different. Every single one of us has a difference. You know, there's, we're, we're all different people. Hey, Rosie. Um, but the thing is, is that if we work together, we can change this world in a positive, positive way. Absolutely. And if we are talking positive, the news will have no other, no other course, but to talk about the good we do together. You know, right. it really Absolutely. doesn't, it really doesn't matter what your race, what your color, what your religion, what anything. Cold kills people. Hunger kills people. And while people are dying, it's an us problem. I love you, brother. You know that. And I respect you. And I think all of the stuff you're doing uh, with PACT and uh, the pay it forward and all that. How can people find the network? watch the podcast and the website let make sure everybody knows all of that stuff communitypayitforward.us is the website and if you go on there there's links to everything that we've got um and uh just real quick and i know that we're running out of time here but community pay it forward is the best way ever to take and um help somebody in need because what we've done, Sean, is we've taken, we have found small to medium business owners who are going to give, uh, allow us to tell their story, allow us to tell what they do and why they do it. And when you 
are when you put together your to-do list, your honey-do list, um, which I know you get them just like the rest of us. If you go to our website, which is communitypayitforward.us, if you use one of the partners that I have on that list, if you shop with them, they're going to give us a, a referral fee, a, a referral award. What we are going to do that's different is we're going to take 80% of that referral award and we're going to let you choose out of the people who have asked us for help where to send 80% of that referral award. Cool. We want to use those sales to generate a healthy, happy, loving, uh, cooperating community. And this just gives us a chance to really do this. And we have got some of the best partners. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, uh, this real quick. This is one of the causes that we work with. This is Brian Gibson. He literally pulled a gun out of his mouth. He was a medic in the Middle East. And he has now found God and he's running a faith-based mission to wow. where he's going to house 12 single veterans and two families who have nowhere to go. And we're going to work with them throughout the resources of it all. Equine therapy, therapy, credit repair, job finding, medical assistance, all in one programs. So, you know, again, I get to tell people stories and that what's, that's what makes what I do so important to me. It's Absolutely. the best thing I get to do is I can tell you the story about everyone I work with. And that's a rare, wonderful, wonderful thing to get to tell so many stories. God bless you, brother. That's going to be some cool stuff. I'm looking forward to the next big fundraising broadcast you do. The last one was very cool. And any any help you need from me, um, just ask. I'm there for you, okay? Hey, you know what? We're always looking for help. Um, you know, uh, right here is, once again, this is one of our channels that you can go. We've got some wonderful partners there. And we'll just ask people, if you want to support what we're doing, use this code, just go to our website. You can always help us. Let's let's work in getting these stand-up buildings built. They're important and people need them. So, um, but uh, you know, I, I appreciate you uh, letting me come on and, and share my story. I've loved working with you those last couple months. I'm kind of glad that Adrian got busy. So she had to skip <laughs> out on you, you know, and gave me the chance to, to step in here. Um, you know, I've got to work with some great people on on uh, in the paranormal field. Uh, introduced me to some wonderful people. Rosie on my 22 hour podcast, which you were my very first guest on that night. Um, 22 hour podcast all about uh, veteran suicide. And uh, one of the things that you and your wife do, you you talk about it in your intro, is if you're having a life crisis, you can talk to you. And that's one of the reasons why I felt it's so important to have you on there, because you can talk to people about, you know, making that life ending decision. There is no re there's no um, there's no reacting to it. If you react, the person's gone. Yeah. We need to preact. We need to find ways to preact about things. And when we do that, we can maybe change and keep some of these lives. Uh, God bless you, brother. Absolutely. Um, we've got a few minutes left. What I'm going to do is get to a few fan questions. Okay. I always say I'm going to do that every week and then mm -hmm. I get to hardly any of them and then I don't get hate mail, but they always get back to me and say, I sent you that question a week in advance and you still didn't ask it. <laughs> okay. Here's a few fan questions for you. <laughs> somebody said, uh, somebody reached out and said, Zach Clayton, I know a, <laughs> I know a Zach, but he spells his name Z A C H A R I E. Is that the same Zachary, or is it Z A C H A R Y? Well, it's both. It it <laughs> really depends on who I am. Sean, for the first 16 years of my life, I spelled my name Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. That's the way my parents wanted me to spell it. 
that's how I spelled my name. I went in to go get my license and they told me I couldn't because I was trying to use somebody else's birth certificate. <laughs> the doctor had spelled it with an IE. So now after, you know, you've grown up and you've spelled your name one way, I still sign my name. My signature when I have to spell out Zachary still has the Y at the end, even though I did change it to the IE just because I wasn't going to pay for a name change. Somebody wants to know, how does he celebrate New Year's? <laughs> because at the stroke, there's no, for him, there's, <laughs> for him, there's no stroke of midnight. It's the stroke of night, <laughs> night noon. <laughs> night noon, yeah. <laughs> I love night noon. So okay. actually, so and, and I'll be honest, uh, the last time I saw even close to midnight was the first time I did a 22 hour <laughs> podcast. So, uh, you know, I, I wake up pretty early in the morning. So uh, celebrating New Year's is done be well before night noon. So, yeah, but I, I love my night noons. Somebody said, I love the picture you put on the promo for the show coming up this week with Zach. Uh, the the suit, we love the suit. Unfortunately, he has no appropriate socks to wear with the suit unless he goes with the Daffy Duck socks. <laughs> okay, well, you know, this is not going to go over very well since we're on a Rev show, but I'm wearing the Devils, the New Jersey <laughs> Devils socks today. So it's their so, last game of the year. So. so with the suit you'd have on in inappropriate, inappropriate socks, to yeah, sun, or would you just go barefooted? Oh, you know, I was probably wearing some socks. I don't know, uh, uh, Mickey Mouse or Daffy. Uh, well, probably wasn't wearing Daffy Duck at the day. Charlie Brown, uh, polar bear socks, all those. You know, I, I all I'm of getting, my. I'm getting a vision right now. I'm getting a vision that for your next birthday or for Christmas, you may be getting some socks. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, probably. This is a great question coming up here. Somebody said. Don't let Zach fool you. He is in he's a big time UF into UFOlogy and cryptids. Many times he's claimed there's a little green guy in his home that eats sweets. That I'm telling you, I'm gonna catch that guy someday and I'm gonna beat him up. You know how much ice cream I've lost because of that little green guy? I mean, it's just insane. Every time I get ice cream, that guy eats it. I don't get any of it. Everybody thinks I eat a lot of ice cream. I don't. That little green guy gets it all. Now, <laughs> now I stole this. I have to admit, I stole this. I've tried this. To, since this person sent this question in, I've tried it, and it works out good. When I, you know, accidentally kick, you know, you kick things with your pinky toe, or <laughs> you you trip in the house, or you, have, you spill something, now I just call it a Sean is me. I just pulled a Sean is me. <laughs> Sean is me. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Adrian learned about me real quick is that my different uh, my different personalities have different names. Well, angry Zach is me is here today. Uh, uh, the, the goofy Zach is me is here today. Or, you know, Grandpappy Z <laughs> is here today. So. Oh, brother, I love you. I respect you. I'm glad that we had the chance to catch up. It's been it's been a while. I mean, I see it when I do the show live. I see you just briefly. I know you're behind the scenes making me look good, and that's hard to do. Trust me, I know that. God bless you. Thank you for all that you do for everybody, and thank you for everything you do for me in the show. I hope you, our relationship uh, is um, one that goes on for a long, long time. And I want you to have. Uh, give Adrian a big hug and a kiss for me and have a wonderful remainder to your Friday evening and be careful on your on your upcoming paranormal trip. And if I was there, give you a big hug and a kiss and uh, and maybe even a wedgie. Yeah, have right on. That sounds great. Hey, do me a favor and uh, send love my parents' way. They're uh, both getting up there in age, but you know what? Love that they're still around and uh, – do me a favor when the show when you when you get out of the green room, send me a private message. Their names, I'll light a candle for both of them and offer up a prayer. You got it, my friend. Hey, and to everybody who showed up today to watch us, 
we appreciate your support as always. Much love to everyone. Thank you, sir. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you, brother. See you later. Ah, feels good to be back. And it feels good to talk with somebody like Zach. He's a breath of fresh air. He's just a cool dude. Just a cool dude. I will be here next week, I think, with another, yeah, another new live show, uh, Friday, May 6th, Serenity Jenny. You guys are going to love her. Psychic medium, healer, shaman, happens to be engaged to be married to Squatchy Dave Spinks. That's going to be a great show. What else do I want to tell you guys? Thanks to Things Network. Thanks to Pact Network for simulcasting my shows. Um, I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Stay blessed. Have a blessed week. Stop the violence. Stop the anger. On that note, good night, Danny. Good night, dog. Good night, Jack. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. God bless you all. Peace.